In the mid-20th century, a thunderous roar swept across the American rails, a sound the country had never truly known. It shook the walls of small stations, made wooden bridges tremble, and people standing by the tracks felt it not only with their ears, but with their whole body. The ground itself responded when a new steel giant entered the line, a massive steam locomotive built not for beauty, but for conquering mountains, valleys, and the endless distances that held America together. This giant received the name Big Boy, and nothing could have fit it better. No machine of that era even came close to its size or power. It carried the strength of a mountain avalanche, the speed of an approaching storm, and the precision of engineering refined almost to the level of art. When Big Boy appeared on the horizon, wrapped in clouds of white steam, its silhouette created respect and a quiet shiver even in those who had seen it hundreds of times. Railroads were the lifelines of the nation, carrying the pulse of American industry, and Big Boy became one of the machines that set the rhythm and pace of the country's vast economy. A machine that helped America grow, build, and move forward. The early 1940s, America was growing, pushing forward, exploring new lands, but growth brought new challenges. Union Pacific faced a problem that seemed almost insolvable. Heavy trains had to be dragged over the steep, unforgiving climbs of the Wasatch Mountains. Ordinary locomotives simply gave up. Wheels slipped, temperatures soared, mechanisms broke under crushing loads. Engineers at Alco understood. A locomotive was needed that would surpass everything built before. A machine not just more powerful, but several times more powerful. And so, the idea of a new wheel arrangement was born. 4884. Two sets of driving wheels, two steam engines, two independent articulated frames working together as one. Essentially, two locomotives combined into a single body which still had to run smoothly and steadily through the harshest curves. Its enormous boiler stretched farther than a city bus. The whole machine reached almost 40 meters, making it one of the largest steam locomotives ever built. Its weight approached 600 tons, comparable to a modern jet airliner. When one of the engineers picked up a piece of chalk and wrote two words on the blueprint, Big Boy, no one objected. The name instantly captured its character. Powerful, confident, intimidating, majestic. A name that would stay forever. Big Boy was created as a tool of strength. He wasn't built for elegance or looks. He was engineered to pull loads no one else could move. 17,000 horsepower, a number that barely fits into the mind. That force moved enormous trains as if they were weightless. The steam machine inside Big Boy worked like a gigantic heart. Cylinders nearly a meter wide struck rhythm after rhythm. Steam pressure reached 20 atmospheres, and each beat of the rods sent a metallic pulse into the rails. When he passed by, people felt those shocks in their chest. His wheels towered above the waist of an adult, allowing him to keep speed even under the heaviest loads. Two independent engine units let him gently enter curves without losing balance, even on difficult mountain tracks. Each hour, this steel giant consumed almost 12 tons of coal. Every few miles, he needed thousands of liters of water. But in return, he produced a pulling force that amazed even the most experienced engineers. He pulled trains up slopes where other locomotives wouldn't even try. When World War II began, America entered a period of maximum pressure on its transportation network. Steel, 
machinery, military equipment, food, ammunition, everything had to move constantly and quickly. And Big Boy turned out to be the perfect machine for these difficult years. He confidently hauled long trains across snowy ridges and endless plains, not allowing the war to slow down the flow of vital cargo. His pulling performance was so exceptional that lighter locomotives were often removed from the route, giving way to Big Boy for the largest and most crucial loads. Engineers treated him with respect, close to reverence. He was complex, hot, demanding, but in return offered unmatched reliability. Many said that standing in his cab felt like controlling a living steel mountain. By the mid-1940s, 25 big boy locomotives had become one of Union Pacific's main pillars. They were at the peak of their power, their usefulness, and their historical role. But time moves forward and industry changes with it. In the 1950s, railroads took a decisive step toward diesel power, quieter, cheaper, simpler to maintain. The age of steam began to fade like a lantern losing its flame. Big Boy served the country for nearly two decades. He proved his reliability and strength, traveled thousands of miles, hauled millions of tons. But progress was unforgiving even to giants. Steam locomotives became too expensive. Massive fuel consumption, enormous water demands, constant maintenance, and the need for a large crew. One by one, the Titans left the rails and rolled into storage yards. Many were scrapped. Others became monuments, reminders of a time when railroads ruled the nation. So ended the era of steel giants, an era in which Big Boy was king. When we look at Big Boy today, whether in a museum, an old photograph, or historical film, we see more than a machine. We see an era shaped by people who dared to dream and forged those dreams into steel. We see the strength of human hands, the labor of thousands of workers who spent months assembling every part. We see the desire to conquer distances, to connect cities, to build roads for the future. Big Boy reminds us that technology is not only about speed and efficiency, it is also passion boldness, and the need to leave a mark in history. And as long as his massive shadow lives in human memory, as long as his name is spoken, as long as children look up at him and imagine what he once was, Big Boy remains alive, not on the rails, but in legend.